Hello everyone, welcome to Avipedia. My name is Abhishek Sharma and today we will be dis discussing the budgetary heads and the reforms therein since 2017. So essentially why did we need to do this reform? So first part is this, that uh, the C. Rangarajan committee and various committees prior to that had recommended that we should do away with the plan, non-plan expenditure terminology that we are using in case of expenditure budgeting. So therein the government needs to focus more upon uh, the things that can be rationalized by a common man also and can be easily uh, and comprehensively discussing how much expenditure you need to make on a certain project. So for this purpose we now shifted our terminology after 2017 that's the end of the 12th five year plan which was the last five year plan in fact given by the planning commission. So now our expenditure planning has shifted and now we use the terminology scheme expenditure and expenditure other than scheme. This is how we have differentiated it instead of plan and non-plan expenditure. And as far as the receipts part is concerned, there it is the same thing, nothing more has changed there. Now as far as so your budgeting and uh, expenditure mapping is concerned, why it was changed is, see uh, let's say you are creating a school under certain scheme, so that will come on the basis of the plan expenditure which will be given under the five year plan. Now in that five year plan they will not mention what will be required in terms of salaries, what will be required in terms of maintenance and other staff that will be hired while running that school. So this is why comprehensive mapping of the expenditure could not be done in the given budget. Now they have done it in a separate way. Now within the scheme expenditure they have taken up revenue accounting and capital accounting both. So anytime any project is financed by the budget, now that project will be accounted for in both ways. What will be required to create any kind of assets within that project and what will be then required to maintain and run those assets over a period of time. So both things will now be taken into consideration on a year on year basis, right? So you can even go on to enhance your assets and you can also go on to uh, maintain and run those assets smoothly within that uh, revenue and capital accounting both happening. See within the budgetary terminology first and foremost thing that you have to understand if you don't know about what is this revenue and capital thing. So you have to differentiate between them very clearly. Revenue essentially means any kind of money generated or spent because we will have revenue receipts and revenue expenditure as you can see the terminology. So it is either generated or spent on operational activities. So maybe let's say you bought a hotel. Now on a daily basis you are running the hotel. So the money that you will receive by running the hotel that is called as revenue receipt. So it's an operational activity thing. Similarly, now you are giving salaries to your staff. You are maintaining or any kind of electric circuit breakdowns or anything repair happens. So on that whatever expenditure you will be making on a recurrent basis that is then called revenue expenditure. Again it is operational, it is recurrent in nature. Now if you want to talk about capital, so there the capital receipts and capital expenditure, both things will happen. The capital receipts will be dealing with any kind of assets that you already had. Let's say now we sell that hotel. So now at this point of time it will be a capital receipt, right? But this will be only one time, so it will be non-recurring in nature. Once you sold the hotel, it's no longer yours. Similarly, when you bought this hotel in the first place, now this is called capital expenditure, right? Here also it will be non recurring in nature. You will not buy the same hotel again. You already bought it, it's your asset. So in this way, whenever this capital thing is happening, either it is in receipts or expenditure, it also affects the assets and liabilities in a deterministic way. Whenever you go for capital expenditure, your assets can increase or your liabilities can decrease. How will this happen? So whenever you pay off a principal amount on the loan that you have borrowed, that is when your liabilities go down and this is also called as capital expenditure. Now on the other hand, on the same loan if you paid the interest rate, this will be called as a revenue expenditure because it's recurring in nature, you have to do it every month. Got the idea? Okay. Now if you think of this revenue and capital or receipts and capital in a certain way, Look at this. In the receipt section, that is the money coming in towards the government, there are two kinds of ways through which the money can come in. Either you can earn it or you can borrow it. Yes. So within this, we can differentiate in two ways. That's how it is shown in the government budgeting. That is 
revenue receipts and capital receipts. The revenue receipts are further divided into two types. There is tax revenue and non-tax revenue. This tax revenue, as you know, there is direct taxes are there as per Income Tax Act of India, in which the incidence and the impact of tax will be on the same person. Then there is indirect taxes that was regulated as per GST these days and some aspects outside of GST as in case of alcohol. Then your five kinds of fuel, these are yet outside of uh, GST. So apart from that, there is non-tax revenue. So non-tax revenue, you know, government generates out of uh, any kind of profits or uh, dividends that it earns from the public sector enterprises, any kind of interest on the loans that it has offered, any kind of financial services or general services, fee, fine, or uh, penalties, or even grants that the government can receive. So all that is clubbed under non-tax revenue, right? Now, as far as the capital receipts are concerned, there are of two types. One are debt generating capital receipts, and another are non-debt generating capital receipts. Debt generating, obviously, you are borrowing, and then whatever happens here, this is the debt generating capital receipt. Okay. Non-debt generating, let's say you sell off your assets, for example, disinvestment in public sector enterprises. So this will be a non-debt generating capital receipt. Or if you get the principal you, that you have given to any state back from those states, now this is also a non-debt generating capital receipt because the principal amount has come back to you, right? If you get the interest, that is revenue receipt. But if you get the principal, now that is capital receipt, okay? On the loan that you gave to the states or to anybody else, to maybe even foreign governments. Now, after this, the expenditure side, there is scheme expenditure and expenditure rather than scheme. So anything that is to be sent, uh, you know, spent on either central sector schemes or centrally sponsored schemes, that will be given here only, right? So in this, there is revenue count and capital count. It means what is to be spent on operational activity, maintenance activity, payment of salaries, etc. Within that scheme expenditure will come here and capital count will come here. For example, in Mandriga, the salaries of the people, the wages will come in revenue count and any assets that you build, any tools, equipment, etc, etc that you buy, that is in capital count. Okay. Then the expenditure other than scheme in that section, you have everything else that is on revenue count on capital count. There also the same thing is there. But two things are shown separately in expenditure other than scheme within the revenue count. This is of which uh, interest payments and second they say of these two things are shown separately because they have a utility in calculation of aggregates. For example, interest payments are shown separately because when you calculate primary deficit from fiscal deficit, at that point you will say fiscal deficit is equal to, uh, sorry, primary deficit is equal to fiscal deficit minus interest payments. That's how it will come out to be. Okay. For example, let's say India ka agar 6 lakh crore rupee ka abhi fiscal deficit hai, to usme पिछले जो लोन चले आ रहे हैं उनका ब्याज है प्लस इस साल जो लोन लेना पड़ेगा वो भी उसके अंदर है तो जो इस साल लोन लेना पड़ेगा उसको बोल देते हैं प्राइमरी डेफिसिट और जो पिछले चला आ रहा है उसका ब्याज भी जब ऐड हो जाता है इसके अंदर तो तब हम बोलते हैं फिजिकल डेफिसिट तो फॉर एग्जांपल गवर्नमेंट को नया लोन तो कम ही लेना पड़ता है जैसे 50000 करोड़ तो पीछे का जो ब्याज खड़ा होगा वो 5.5 लाख करोड़ के आसपास होगा सो दिस कम्स आउट टू बी अराउंड 6 लाख करोड़ रुपीस यस सो दैट इज हाउ द फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज मैप फिर ऐसे ही जो दूसरा एस्पेक्ट उन्होंने दिखाया ऑफ विच ग्रांट से नेट फॉर क्रिएशन ऑफ कैपिटल एसेट तो उसके अंदर हम एक रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट कैलकुलेट करते हैं कि अभी जो रेवेन्यू रिसीव्स और रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर आ रहे हैं उन दोनों के बीच का गैप क्या है तो रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट जब कैलकुलेट किया जाता है तो इससे अगर आप ये माइनस कर दें ऑफ विच ग्रांट से नेट फॉर क्रिएशन ऑफ कैपिटल एसेट तो वॉट यू गेट इज इफेक्टिव रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट ठीक तो इसकी डिस्कशन तो हम पहले भी एक वीडियो के अंदर कर चुके हैं फिजिकल डेफिसिट रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट प्राइमरी डेफिसिट तो आप उस के अंदर देख सकते हैं यूपीएससी के अंदर ये तीनों ही बड़े इंपॉर्टेंट हैं जब भी बजटरी टर्मिनोलॉजी के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आता है तो ये फिजिकल डेफिसिट रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट प्राइमरी डेफिसिट पे बहुत बार क्वेश्चन यूपीएससी पिछले 20 साल में पूछ चुका है सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर यू और अभी जो रीसेंट बजटरी रिफॉर्म्स हैं तो उसमें 2017 के अंदर जो टर्मिनोलॉजी चेंज किया गया है इस पे अभी क्वेश्चन आना बाकी है सो इंश्योर दैट यू नो थॉरली अबाउट देम सो ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सो मच इज मी अभिषेक शर्मा साइनिंग ऑफ and you can please press the bell icon that you have in the video channel and subscribe to this youtube channel so that you get uh, all the relevant videos for your upsc economy section thank you so much all the best